Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> oh, goodness, my voice is fine, and then it went. <laughs> um, <clears throat> happy Saturday. We are open today, um, but in the lovely weather that we're having at the moment, it is, of course, raining. So we're not seeing anyone today. So I thought, I'm finishing this piece. I really want to show you stain and glaze over chalk finish. Um, <clears throat> and now my voice is gone funny. Um, so I figured since it's quiet, let's do a live. Um, I was actually going to do this last night after the store closed. Um, but then I had kids and everything else happened. So we're going to do it now instead. And um, I've been wanting to show you this for a while. I've shown you all um, stain and glaze over white chalk finish before. Um, I think it might have been cloud, actually. Let me get them. Let me show you. These ones. So this was, oh goodness, I'm not sure. I feel like it was only last year, but I think it might have been the year before. So it was like a good, yeah, I'd, I'd say it was before last Christmas or the Christmas before. Um, but this is, I'm pretty sure this was cloud and it has got um, stain and glaze in the color Midnight, which is the black. So I've shown you this before. It's up on our YouTube. It's just the Painted Brush & Co. If you search that on YouTube, will pop up. Um, and it was a Facebook Live as well, so you can find it. So I have shown you um, the stain glaze as a glaze over chalk paint before, so go and check that one out. It was only a short video, I'm pretty sure. I'm sure it was a Facebook Live. It might not have been, but I'm pretty sure it was. Um, and as you can see, it brings out all those details. Now, over a white, obviously, when you're putting black over white, you're going to get that grey, which is fine for what I was going for for this. Makes it look really old and aged. And then we rub this right back. Where's a good bit? This one's pretty good. I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick it up. Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. So this is gold. And we really, really rub this. So you can see little flecks of that gold coming through as well, which makes it look really cool. But um, I thought today, let's show you the white over carbon, which is our black chalk paint. Let me find something with that. So carbon is our black black. Um, if you don't quite want to go as black as carbon, um, you can go, so this is carbon in the silk, carbon in chalk. Obviously chalk finish, it marks a lot. That's why there's marks on our boards, but this is in the silk. Absolutely beautiful. Carbon is by far one of my favorite colors to use. Obviously a piece of black furniture is timeless. Um, it goes really well. It sells really well for me as well here. Um, I don't like doing white furniture, but black furniture I'll quite happily do because black's really easy to work with. Um, so I do do a lot of carbon. Uh, if you don't want to go quite as dark, you can go for lead. This is carbon in the chalk and this is lead. So it's a little bit lighter, not heaps, but if you don't want like black, black, lead's a really, really great choice. After that, we're going significantly lighter. Um, I actually had that question earlier this morning. I had somebody ask. So I thought it was a good time to show you. So, and this is what I mean by significantly lighter. I'm just checking my shelf. Is that the next one down? Yeah, it is. Um, so peppercorn's your next option. So we've got carbon, lead, and then peppercorn. And that's all in the silk. I like showing it in the silk um, because silk, the colour, this is what you're going to get when you seal your chalk finish. So that's pretty much the finish colour that you're looking at. Um, did my carbon have a, it does. So here, up here in this top corner, that's got a little bit of wax on it, just to show you. So that's your finish colour in the chalk. But I like to show the silk because more often than not, in most of the colours, that's the finish colour that you'll get when you seal your chalk finish. Now, I use chalk finish because I absolutely love it. Um, I don't mind the extra step of sealing at all. Chalk finish is porous, so you do have to seal it. That is the biggest difference between the two ranges. Silk finish has got the built-in top coat. You don't have to seal. But chalk finish, you do have to seal. I don't mind the extra step. I know some of you do. That's fine. Um, the main thing is, 
Silk finish needs a primer, chalk finish doesn't need a primer. Silk finish doesn't need to be sealed, chalk finish has to be sealed. So either way, you've got at least two steps with your paint. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're choosing your paint as well. We do highly recommend a primer with silk finish. The only time I really use a primer with chalk finish is if I'm using a really light color or I'm concerned about bleed through um, and tr just trying to get my coverage. So if I'm using say a white, trying to get the coverage, um, a primer really does make a difference there. But apart from that, I really don't prime much at all. So let me show you the piece that we're working on. So I picked this piece up a few weeks ago. I actually went and brought um, the blue hole table that I was working on. Oh goodness, what is my hair doing? Um, the blue hole table that I showed, I think that was last week. I had some videos and that of it. Um, I went and brought that and then I'm like, do you want this as well? So I brought this as well. So it's this beautiful little, I think you call it a pedestal table. Um, it is old, it's cedar, um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So it's got all this really, really nice detail. Um, and I'll bring you closer so you can see the legs. Oh, where are we? The sun behind us isn't great. Um, it's got this really nice detailing in the legs. So I just want to highlight it, not too much. I don't want the highlight to be in your face, but I just want this little bit of detail to be highlighted just a touch. I've painted this with one coat of carbon. That's all it's needed. I've done a couple of tiny little touch-ups up here in these crevices this morning where I've missed a couple of bits, but carbon is amazing coverage. Um, it absolutely does not need a second coverage if you get really good coverage on your first go. I have also painted this with one of our, let me grab it, one of these, one of Purell Cosmetics. Um, it's open. One of Pure Eco's palm brushes, blah, blah, blah. One of Pure Eco's palm brushes. It's quite the words to say, apparently. Um, which is a natural bristle. So this has given me a little bit more texture than what a synthetic bristle would give. So a synthetic bristle, this isn't a great example because it's already got paint on it. Let me grab one of our regular ones. Synthetic bristle, these are our synthetics. So this is what you'll see me using probably like 95% of the time. I don't use natural bristles that often, except when I want a little bit extra texture. So I've used a natural bristle on this to do my chalk paint, just so that I get that little bit extra. We've got some flat surfaces either side of the legs um, and a little bit over all the center as well. So I just wanted that little bit more texture so that this has something sort of to sit in. Um, and to give us that bit more detail as well. So, let me put those back over there. The mess that I clean up after lives is ridiculous, I must say. Um, so, beautiful table. I'll quickly bring you up. There's our top. I have not cleaned up this edging yet. As you can see, it's really, really curved. Uh, I'm gonna get my blade in there and I'm gonna hand sand that a bit later. But the top has been sanded. Um, I like to... Do, when I do my prep work, I like to like lay a whole heap of pieces out, get them all sanded in one go. Um, I think I sanded like five other pieces the day I sanded this. Um, and I did them all in like an hour and a half with my electric sanders. I just find it's a little bit quicker to do multiple pieces at, a, at once. And then once they've, once they've got that sort of prep done, they can sit in the shed um, or they come into the shop like this one has and they sit here for a couple of weeks until I'm ready to start on them. Oh, apologize, I'm out of breath. Baby is pushing on my lungs today. All right, let's get some stain and glaze in here. So I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer. I apologize for the sun. Facebook's not, it doesn't always, let me see if turning this on works. Well, that's a little bit better. Now you can sort of see that detail a bit more. You'll see it more as we go anyway. So. We're using stain and glaze in the Whisper. I also love to use the liquid wax in the white over carbon. It's one of my favorite finishes. But today I thought let's use this and um, I'll show you this instead. So you'll get the same result with a wax and with the Whisper over the carbon. It will look very, very similar. You don't need a lot because we've got detail to get into. I am going to use a brush. This is just one of our um, yellow handled these are our cheaper brushes. I think they're like $10. This is the 38 mil. So it's a little bit wider. We've got 38 mil and I think that one's a 
25 mil. Although, look at my shelf. I think we're out of 38s at the minute. Um, but any brush is fine. This is just what I already had here. Um, I did a quick little um, sample on this back leg earlier just to make sure it was the finish that I wanted. Best thing with this as well, if you decide you don't like it, you can paint over it as well. So all we're going to do, you want a little bit on your brush, not a huge amount, but you're going to brush it on. We don't care about brush strokes or any of that because what we're going to do, you're going to really get that on there. Get up into your little nooks and crannies. We're going to get either side as well. We're also going to brush it down the leg. Now, the only thing with this is you do have to work fairly quickly. Uh, the standing glaze does dry, although it does give you some work time. It is a fairly fast dryer. So you do need to work fairly quickly. For this, I would do a section at a time. If I was doing this same process, but with wax, I would wax the whole table and then I would buff it. Um, whereas this dries a little bit too fast for that. So we just wanna be making sure that we get this on as quickly as possible. Um, another benefit of this is that it does have a built-in top coat as well. I can still seal this further if I, <clears throat> if I really want to, but um, the top coat in this is really good and um, it doesn't really necessarily need it unless I'm feeling like I want a bit of extra protection. I'm going to put my jar up there because I can see myself spilling it. All right, you're gonna grab yourself a rag, old cloth, whatever's going to something that's lint free, not gonna leave a mess and you're gonna wipe over it. And what we're doing is we're removing all that excess. So wiping down the sides. Now you are making your paint underneath a little bit wet. You're gonna get some of the excess coming off on your cloth. You may also find that some of your paint um, comes off as well. So you may get little hints of it. It's not a big deal. You can always touch it up if you don't like it. I don't mind a little bit of the paint coming off and showing a little bit of that timber underneath. I think it adds to it. But if you don't like that, you can always touch up afterwards as well. The wax doesn't necessarily do that. It's more just this paint, uh, just the stain and glaze can. So you're just gonna wipe like that and you can see we've now just got those two nice uh, white streaks going through the legs. I'm just gonna roll it over. I'm gonna get a little corner here. I'm just very carefully gonna run that down just to remove a little bit extra because I think there's just a little bit too much still left in there. I do like you do get a little bit more control with the stain and glaze over the wax as well. The wax really does sink in. Um, so you do lose a little bit more of the control. But I suggest having a go with both and seeing what you like. Everyone's different. Everyone likes something different. So we're just gonna wipe this bottom bit here as well. So I did paint this piece upside down and then I flipped it up the right way for today. Normally I would just keep it up the other way, but because we've got all this detail and I really wanna make sure that we get this into the detail, it is easier to do this with the table up the right way. Um, and that's why I did just a couple of little touch-ups today as well. Oops, yep, yeah, see, this is why I moved the jar. Because I knew I would drop something. Thankfully it's just the lid. <laughs> All right, so you can really see how that's now sitting in there. It's just enough that it's given us a little bit of dimension and it's helped lift that leg. Um, and now you can see that detail, whereas before you couldn't see it. Um, so the purpose of this is purely just to help um, enhance that detail. Let's bring you up. I'm gonna bring it around here a little bit more. Oops, oh, there we go. The windows make this really quite difficult to um, see what's going on. So let's do this bit. So again, I'm going to, I know you can't see the back, but I am going to brush this all the way around. You don't have to be overly generous, but in particular, you just want to make sure you get it into that detail. This is why we like to use a brush. You could use a cloth for this, but you won't quite get as much product into that detail as what you will with a brush. 
Let me use my camera there so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so we're just gonna keep doing that. I will pop this up on YouTube um, later today or at some point, I always say later today. It will most likely be at some point during the week because I will probably forget today, let's be honest. Um, but I do download and pop all our Facebook lives up on our YouTube so you can go back and watch them later on. And I will also link this particular one into the um, Stain and Glaze product description as well on our website so that you can find it easily. Um, and it just gives you another uh, little demo for how to use the product. How are we looking there? Pretty good actually. Okay, so section at a time is the easiest way to do this. Brush it on. Pop your jar out of the road so you don't knock it down. Because whenever you get a nice full jar, it's just what you do. I'm just gonna rotate my cloth. Put a nice clean edge. It's up to you how you wipe it, do it however you like. We're just sort of gonna do that initial wipe. Let's get most most of it off. just want to get a lot of that excess off and then we can really focus and make sure that we get um, make sure that we get any ex extra off that's sort of still sitting there okay so I like to sort of and you do the same sort of thing when you're waxing as well you get the initial excess off and then you go back and you keep buffing it where necessary So, and I'm just rotating my cloth more just so that I don't keep putting those same bits back on. I don't think the camera will be able to see it, although you will a little bit. There's a little bit there where the paint's come off a little bit. I don't mind that at all. Uh, the paint's only coming off because it's obviously gotten wet from this, from the standing glaze. As I said, you can always touch it up if you want and then just go in gently. Um, but I think it really adds a bit of character as well. It's just another easy way of sort of distressing without going in with like a bit of sandpaper. Just make sure anywhere that you've gotten it that you don't want it, you clean up as well. As I said, you can paint straight over it. So if you're really, really not liking it, very easy to remove. Whereas the wax, it's a little bit harder because you have to get all that wax off and wax obviously soaks in as well. You can't just paint over it. How are we looking? Let me come around. I'm just looking at it in the camera. I'm gonna do this here too. Oh, where's my brush? So a little bit up there. Now I've done the top of this leg. I don't think I've done this side by the looks of it. So we're just gonna brush a little bit down there as well. And we're being really, really gentle with our cloth as well. I'm not really putting any elbow into it. I'm just letting the cloth sort of wipe it where necessary. Pop a little bit more over this side and you can keep layering this as well. Um, the same as what you would with a wax. Oh, I just got kicked in the rib. I'm 37 weeks tomorrow, we're almost there. If you haven't already, please pop onto our post from last night and uh, suggest some names for us because we are desperate. Um, this baby does not have a name at the moment. Uh, we're semi okay with girl names, but we need some boy names because we are screwed if this baby is a boy. <laughs> um, we, with our son, we knew, um, let's take you over the other side before I continue talking. With our son, we, all, I knew that he was a boy, like the minute we found out, the minute I saw that positive sign, I just knew, knew he was a boy immediately. Um, and we knew his name straight away. We picked his name out oh, a good couple of years before. We always knew if we had a boy, he would be Oliver. Um, and he's actually named after a car on Top Gear, um, which is a fun little fact. Actually, let's do the legs first before we do that bit. Um, but yeah, he was always going to be a boy. Oh, that door's really bad in there. Um, and our daughter had no inkling at all whether she was a boy or a girl. We've never found out any of their genders when we've 
um, being pregnant, we've always waited. Um, but we, I had no inkling, and I should have known that she was a girl just by the fact that I didn't have that feeling like I'd had with Oliver. Um, but we had two names for her picked out that we really, really liked. And I remember my husband writing all the different spellings up on the whiteboard in the room after we'd had her, trying to decide on a spelling and what we're gonna name her. And we settled on Rosalie. Um, and her middle name was always gonna be Anne, because that's my middle name. Um, and our son is Oliver Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan after my dad, who is Ashley John Edgar, I think it is. Um, so he was always going to be Jonathan. But this baby, <laughs> this baby was not planned to begin with. Um, we don't have any more names up our sleeves. I think I actually deleted the name list after Rosalie was born because we were done. There was no more babies. And I deleted our list with all of our options. So we've had to start completely from scratch for this baby, trying to come up with a name. Of course, we can't remember any of the names that we originally liked. And we're now, hopefully only a couple of weeks, or we know we're only a couple of weeks out. Um, the hospital is not going to allow me to go past 40 weeks. But we're now only a couple of weeks out and uh, this baby does not have a name at all. Um, baby may be nameless for a while while we try to decide. It's, um, it's quite hard naming your child, particularly when you're thinking about the fact that you're also naming an adult. Um, and it's not just a name for, for a few years while they're a child and while they're a toddler, then they, they become an adult and they'll have a working life one day. When you think about that and the fact that you have to sort of name for the future, not just for the present, it does make it that little bit harder as well. It's always been really important to me that their name can grow with them as well. Um, and we do certainly like the older names as well. So if you have any suggestions, jump on that post, let us know. Um, and once baby's been born and all has been revealed, we are going to, um, hello, how are you? Um, we will draw a winner as well, and you'll win a 600 ml pot of paint. Um, so that's what we're doing today. I'm going to finish filming this, but I am gonna hop off live because we've got a customer. Thank you so much for joining us, and um, I will see you all next time. Bye.